This is not just another golf podcast. This is Golf Underground. This is Golf Golf Underground. Underground. We just happen to be the third funniest podcast in golf. We interview PGA Tour pros, Hall of Fame athletes, rock stars, business leaders. Sure, we talk about golf, but we have fun. All right, let's do it. Welcome Welcome to to Golf Golf Underground. Underground. Now your hosts, Wardo, Sully, and and MLB MLB Hall of Famer, George Brett. Brett. Thanks for joining the Golf Underground. Now, the Golf Underground is brought to you by Star Companies, KC. Experience a more energy-efficient and comfortable home with Star's insulation services. Regal Distributing, specializing in the distribution of food service and professional cleaning supplies to a variety of industries. Cowell Insurance, providing brokerage and risk management services for over 25 years. Sano Orthopedics, care plans backed by research and clinical results tailored perfectly to individual needs. Bob Sight Ford and Bob Sight Independence Kia, where you'll score a double eagle on your next car or truck. Lewisburg Ford, nobody sells more F-150s than Lewisburg Ford. And Celebrity Greens, put a custom PGA caliber putting green in your backyard for the ultimate golf experience. Now, onto the program. Hey, welcome to Golf Underground. Here we are back in the stable. It's a, a lot has happened since the last time we, we were all together. And, and uh, you know, George, you've, you've, you've traveled. Uh, you're going to tell us a little bit about an amazing Kansas City Royals uh, year. Wardo, you, you're coming fresh off of a huge victory. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. It, this, kind of, this kind of what? is, what's the name of the show? The Golf Underground? This Golf Underground. I think we should start off with golf and our friend, yeah. the guy in the middle. Yeah. He just had a uh, a week, a, a good week of golf, yeah. um, where he won something. Was it the state of Kansas? The Midwest section does a year, obviously events week in week out. They do one um, year long match play, no different than your country club would do, um, and then they seed you accordingly, and then you end up playing. So I think the bracket had thirty six golfers um, in it, and so I ended up playing five matches throughout. So some played some great players along the way, um, had some great matches, played Robert Russell and was down, gosh, four at, with 12 to go, or Ooh. four, down four through 12, and ended up coming back and uh, beating him. And so one well, of those ones. I, I've heard of that name. Where's he play out of? Robert's a, uh, the head pro out at Lionsgate. Great okay. player, hell of a player. Okay. Um, just turned 50. He's going to, he almost won the national CPC club pro championship for the seniors a couple of weeks ago, just right after we had our match. So um, he'll be at senior Q school playing against the Googles of the world. Great player. One of the best putters I've ever seen. So um, all the respect in the world to him. And then we did a 36 whole day last Tuesday, which I don't know if you remember, it was kind of cold. Yes. I played uh, cold that day. And windy. It was cold. Uh, very cold. And uh, so 36 holes and had some good fortune and got up early in both matches and uh, hang and on. One. So, so yeah. you're the what Midwest section? So that they is do this a, a senior? Or? So this no, I'm not a senior yet, George. How old? How old? I don't even know how old you are. <laughs> how old are you? I'm Forty-two. Forty-seven. So yeah, you're you did his wedding, by the way. You I know, know, but know I don't his know. age. I didn't ask. <laughs> so and then what's kind of fun is Brett Bergmeyer and I, who's the pro sure. at Wolf Creek, we're doing the year-long four ball together. We have a semi-mat final match coming up on Halloween, and then uh, I'll go do the little. Where's that stuff at? with Grayson? I think we're going to play it at Shadow or Hallbrook. Uh, should be a good match. Should be fun. And so very excited for that. And then uh, hopefully we can get through that. If I'm in town, would it be all right if I caddied for you? Come on out. Okay. Wow. Let's when he it. won that, uh, he had to play. Uh, he had a double header that day. He played, you know, in the morning. And if you yeah. win, you play again. And I didn't know about it. And somebody Instagrammed it or tweeted it or something. And I saw it on my phone. I'm going, well, that must be an old Photo yeah, of Kevin. He didn't tell. He didn't talk. No, I didn't. Wasn't even aware of it. Nope. And so I see him the day, two days later, and I go, "Hey, I got something. Did you win something recently, yeah. or was that like an old post that you're just trying to keep your name alive?" You know? <laughs> well, I didn't know that. <laughs> he said, "No, I did that Tuesday." I said, "You didn't even call." You know how I one of those caddy for him. Not, I know you do. You know how one of those weeks go by, and you're like, oh, right. you look at your calendar, you go, yeah. oh, here's where I'm going on Tuesday. This will be different. Yeah. Yeah. So that's hey, how did that's you come back out of being four down after twelve? That's not easy. 
So I, I literally had my back against the wall the entire match and just patient, patient, patient. I was going to start taking some unnecessary risks um, on the 10th and 11th hole. Didn't do it. Kind of stuck, stuck to it. And then just kinda, I knew if I could kind of stay in it and start picking away at the lead, I'd have a chance. So I, I birdied the 12th hole at Hallbrook. 13's that downhill par three. I got it up and down of the bunker. Great bunker shot. And then 14, so I won those two holes, so I'm two down. 14's the drivable one, or mm-hmm. the shorter one that mm-hmm. they took the tree out. So I said, screw it, I'm going to hit driver on the, try to hit it up by the green. Hit it right on the fringe, you made birdie there. We have 15, I won 16, and then I made a 25, 30 foot putt on 17. Nice. That's the longest putt you've ever made in your life. Exactly. It's the longest putt. And, uh... The guys I play with, you know, Dick and Brooksy and those guys, yeah. they go, oh, you play with Kevin? He's the worst. And Brooksy always said, he's the worst putter I've ever seen. Uh, I go, Brooksy, you know why? Because he puts all those five-footers. You don't even get out of the cart exactly. for a five-footer. Right. You just, Brooksy, you know, if you're playing with Brooksy and he's got a five-footer, he hits a good shot, he goes, yeah, I'm picking up. That's good. Yeah. Kevin puts them all. Yeah. Oh, well, I sure God. made a, sure made a lot of, when it was cold the other day, I was just trying to stay warm. I'm like, all right, get good speed. And all of a sudden, when you get good speed, Sometimes the hole gets in the way. Did so. you win on 18? No, we, I won in the matches the other day, shy of 18, on six, uh, 15 and 16. So, yeah. No, but I mean against uh, Against Russell. Robert, yeah, we on 18, one on 18. Wow, that's good. Good comeback. It was a good, match. It was a good yeah. match. Well done. So. Okay, that's the golf for the show. <laughs> we'll see you next well, week. Well, we have a guy. We have a guy. I, I was driving here today, and where I was at home, and, and I saw I missed a call from Matt Gogol. And so I called Matt back, and I was driving over here, and I said, what are you doing? He said, just doing errands. I said, well, you've been playing a lot of golf lately. And he, he finished top 50 in the – right now, he's in the top 50, so he gets to play this week in the senior tour. And and Matt lives probably 10 houses from me. And I said, well, what are you doing now? I'm doing a bunch of errands. I said, hey, I'm going to the stable because he comes here and hits balls once in a while. And I said, hey, come on down. We'll be there for like an hour. Yeah. If you have 10 minutes, just stop on by. He said, hey, I'll try. We know what Which that really means. meant, hey, you know what that there's means. no freaking way no. I'm coming to do your Freaking no. podcast. Maybe if you invited him to uh, Eddie V's tonight yeah. to fill one of the, no. uh, the, He's the empty seats. Tomorrow. Yeah. But um, he might stop by. Well, it looks like um, obviously Vegas just got done with the Shriners and uh, our good pal Gary Woodland had a good run. So obviously he was in, back in He's town back. last week for, um, for the Kansas Golf Foundation uh, induction, which uh, sounds like it went great. And then. Uh, Did you show up at all? I did not make it. That was Grayson's. Birthday, and then I had a high tail. I, I, I got. I just got to give you a, a heads up. <laughs> I already know what you're you. You could have celebrated your one year old son's birthday the day after his birthday or the day before, and you think he would have ever known? I don't. Sully, think, I, I just, have kids. Hey, How old are your kids? These pictures are time stamped. George. How old are your kids? Uh, 25, 22, and eighteen. Okay. Do you George. think they would know if, like, they were? Under six or under seven, if you miss the birthday nah, by a it's day. Like an, it's like a wedding anniversary, George. You could do it the day before, the day after. George, it's all the same. If you haven't realized, I wasn't doing it for Grayson. I'm doing it for Grayson's mom. So then I don't have to hear about it in six months. That's so when point. you want me to go last minute to... That's a last Bally, minute. When you want yeah. me to go last minute to Bally Neal or whatever on a hot trip, or we you finally take us to Sage, mm. then I'll be able to be like, hey, remember that time when I skipped Gary's thing for Grayson's birthday? And she'd be like, yeah, go. So you got to build up some points. Okay, go. What did you hear you about? It? Because that was our. That oh, was, that was our. I knew about it. I knew about it a month before because I bought a table. I wasn't even there. I was in New York. Yeah, I was saying, in New York George. with the Royals, and I just I told Riss Miller. I said, "Hey, fill up my table." And guess I what? He there. is. Well, see it, Bass and those guys went. Yeah, one of the high school. You know, kids. our last show was with the, uh, the the director of that. Yeah, when you, yeah. you know, one of the high school kids. I go, was it busy? And they go, well, yeah, except for George's table, that thing was empty. No, <laughs> no way. Oh no, it was big tickets. Sea Bass, Riss Miller, Brooksy, Jigger left early. I don't know. Dick just, Clancy. Oh, I'm just telling. No, an I, empty I mean, table I right in front. Bunch of thanks. Well, Jigger didn't stay for the dinner. He went for the cocktails. <laughs> Of course. He just went beforehand. He didn't hear any of the speeches. Amazing. So, I, you know, the tables were 10, 10 people at a table. I think I probably had, well, I know 
Well, I don't know if anybody brought their wives. I think it was a stag night for these guys. <laughs> so they might have had five guys. You got him against the fence now. See, yeah. he's coming, coming back at him. Well, <laughs> what, it was what, a good donation to the Kansas Golf. Yes, it was. It Paul, was yeah. Hell, what Amazing. is the Kansas Golf Association? Kansas Golf Foundation, yeah. yeah. What, did, um, what did Woodland say about it? Did you say it was a nice event? Said it was great. I actually talked to him the next morning as I was going up to uh, Baggett, uh, Caddy for Charlie at Q School, and... Um, I said it was great. Good night. And, uh, I guess his speech was pretty darn good, as from what I've heard. Nice. For a guy that hates to speak in public, and yeah, was he wearing a tie? I don't know if he was wearing a tie. He didn't have you to tie it. I don't know who tied it. He didn't have you to tie it. I have to tie his ties for him when he needs to wear a tie. Yeah. Remember his answer? Come on, Gary, he said, let's go. He said, we brought that up at Wardo's wedding at the show. He's like, hey, hey. I play golf for a living. It's all I do. It's the only thing I'm good at. Do one. <laughs> I don't tie ties. I don't talk a lot. He was pretty good then. <laughs> he pretty good. <laughs> He's still pretty good. He's pretty solid. Uh, yeah. Hey, what's it like going up to a Q school thing like that? So, so tell the listener a little bit about what, what I literally could write a book. I was thinking about it the entire week on. It's literally the most nerve wracking thing for obviously the player for obviously any caddy family member, mom, dad, whoever's there. Mm -hmm. It's just, no one's talking to any, each other with, within reason. You literally go golf course, maybe to dinner, rinse and repeat for one week straight. You're getting a lot of sleep, a lot of rest in the, in the hotel room. We've got every recovery thing, bands, name it, you name it for stretching, warm ups, all that. We've got the boots. Um, and it's just a lot of downtime, me trying to keep him, you know, thinking about other stuff, watching Royals, uh, was on NFL, but, um, it's just crazy when you, when people think like, you know, their game's good or, Hey, I'm going to go give this another shot. Like, Everyone out there is good and everyone's got some talent and it's just a matter of who's going to put it and chip it a little bit better. And, um, but it's just, I've done it four times playing and now I guess one or two times kind of on the other side. And it's just, it's a golf tournament, but it's just got a little more than that. Did you notice any difference? Like you played a lot of golf with Charlie at Wolf Creek and Mission or whatever and traveling around playing. Did you notice a different demeanor in him from the moment he woke up to the on the range practicing to first tee to around around the course? I mean, is it just grind city? For six uh, hours a day? Yeah, and it's slow. Or and were you able to have fun and laugh and stuff? Well, that was kind of my approach for the week is one was to not, for me on the bag, not think about score I, I, and where we're at relative to par. I feel like that's something I've done well with my own game and my limited rounds this year. Um, so that was kind of one of my goals for being is just stay in the moment, stay in the moment, all the cliche stuff. And then, but, you know, it's just when he got there and he's, he's just doing his body of work, it's not like he's not laughing or chuckling here and there. But, um, you know, my job was to keep him, keep him kind of chill and have fun with it and uh, go play to his potential. He didn't quite do that and missed by four, but um, he was right there knocking on the door. I think his approach was a little conservative probably for what, if we're looking back on it now, um, but it pretty damn close. Um, so just didn't quite have the stuff to get through and that's just kind of how golf is. So, yep. but really close and I thought he handled himself very well. Um, you know, there's just a couple things, but you know, that could have been done better mentally and a couple better, you know, hit the shot he needed at the time. So our course management was so was pretty damn spot on. And what's kind of unique is when we go to bed the night before we know where the wind is. We know where the wind is at every hour. So when we're mapping out what we're doing on the preparation, we're like, all right, we're going to hit driver here because it's going to squeeze it down or we'll be able to get to this par five and two or, hey, it's going to be so downwind on this one hole. Like we're going to lay back a little bit because the fairway is wider in this um, in this area. So it's very strategic where, you know, a lot of these high school golfers and kids getting into golf, that's what I'm trying to reiterate is the planning that goes in and all the preparation on the front end. That way, Charlie had less golf anxiety when he knows he's just like, I'm on the third hole. I'm grabbing three wood because right. that's there's, there's one less decision and one less thing you have to think about. So 
it didn't go his, his way, but there was a lot of really good things from the preparation side, and um, there's some good takeaways from it. What was it like emotionally after that? Oh, I was sick up there. Yeah, I, I was sick, not feeling good, so that was part of it. And then emotionally, like, and for me, I haven't gotten too much sleep at home with a one-year-old, so, like, it was like sneaky resort time at the Hampton Inn for me. Mm. <laughs> so, oh, so you- I was enjoying a little rest and R&R and R and just um, mm-hmm. getting caught up on a few things. But, no, I was I was. A, Sick, but I was also pretty exhausted each I day. Bet. How are those breakfasts? They're pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> the Hamptons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay, you, you do the waffle? Stay at them you do at, the waffle? No, I don't do I just huh? get the eggs and the sausage. Maybe some bacon, glass mm. of milk, take my my vitamins that are medicine that I yeah. take, and that's it. Yeah. What do you do? How do you get the pubic hairs out of the uh, buffet? <laughs> how do you pull, like, the, off the eggs? You know, little. I don't do them. I just eat them with the food. <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, doing? You're a sick dog. <laughs> uh, is that what that is? Uh, yeah, you got to look a little closer to here today. <laughs> let's talk some Royals baseball. Let's talk Royals. We're take a break. Yeah, no, no, no. Let's, uh, let, let's talk a little Royals baseball. Um, George, you had a nice run. Baltimore, you headed out to Baltimore. Did we do a break already? No, we didn't do a break do yet. A break. You want to do a break? do a break? All right, George needs a Coors Light. It's no, all right. No. I do. I oh, do. do. All right, come back. We're going to talk about Royals. Uh, you got serious airtime on Fox. Uh, I heard that. Fox. I made my phone blew up on me. I mean, it was funny. Uh, on Twitter, like they, they, everyone thought like um, Bob Costas was, you know, man crush on you. Well, he really did. He doesn't doesn't like the Royals, but he likes George Brett. <laughs> so come on back. Golf on the ground. Cowell Insurance Services is your leading program administrator for workers' compensation. They're dedicated to meeting the unique challenges of the insurance industry and assisting employers in reducing their costs. CIS has provided insurance, claim, and loss control services to various industries, including trucking, construction, retail convenience stores, and healthcare, as well as public entities for over 30 years. They work with both retail agents and industry clients, or a combination of the two. If you're tired of fighting the rising costs of premiums and claims, give Cowell Insurance Services a call. Their dedicated staff is ready to find you the best insurance option at the most competitive price. They can help to define or enhance your safety program in order to move you in the right direction in reducing your claim and premium costs. Contact Cowell Insurance Services today, 816-214-4070. What's up, Underground? Sully here with a message from our friends over at Bob Sight. Now, buying a new vehicle can be a bit like buying a new set of clubs, which means when you want to drive the ball straight, you seek advice from experts, golf pros like our boy Wardo. And when it comes to buying your next car or truck, you also need expert advice so that you drive away in style. Well, you now have options with the Sight family's expanded dealership, now including Honda and Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Lawrence, Kansas. And they're there to guide you to the perfect vehicle. With a commitment to exceptional service and a real passion for helping each customer, they're like the trusted golf pros of the auto world. And they're ready to analyze your needs and match you with your ideal ride. So step into bobsite.com or visit their Lawrence locations. Experience the difference of a team that's dedicated to helping you navigate your options, ensuring you drive off with confidence and satisfaction. Hey, Brian Sullivan of Golf Underground with my favorite orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Kevin Witte from Sano Orthopedics. Hey, Doc, golf season's over. My back is killing me. I know it's football season, so you got a lot of kids coming in, blown ACLs, all sorts of body parts with problems. And then, of course, those baseball players. I know you fix a lot of elbows. Why is Sano Orthopedics the absolute best sports medicine orthopedic group in Kansas City? Well, if you want to see the guys in town who have had the best orthopedic fellowship training in sports medicine, um, including training with Dr. James Andrews and Dr. Larry Lemack, come see us. Uh, we individualize patients' uh, plans to get them back to that activity and that sport that they love. And we actually care and listen to our patients and follow up with them, make sure that they're getting the results they need. Okay. And so the three things that separate you, number one, best training. Number two, you specialize in getting people on that field. Number three, you're actually listen. Where can I learn more? Because you got me all in and I don't really want to get fixed, but it's time. At sonoorthopedics.com, 816-525-2845. Hi, this is George Brett, Hall of Fame baseball player, and I've been playing golf for over 35 years. Hitting the ball far was never my problem, but the closer I got to the greens, that's when my problems began. When I wanted a golf practice area in my backyard, I called Celebrity Greens. They are the industry leader in custom-built synthetic golf greens. These championship caliber, low-maintenance greens roll great, 
react like real bent grass, and hold chip shots that check and spin. I absolutely love mine, not only in Kansas City, but also in Arizona. Call the pros at Celebrity Greens at 1-888-507-7960 or visit them online at CelebrityGreens.com. Practice like the pros or people like me that want to be pros right in your own backyard. Hey, Brian Sullivan, Golf Underground, with a little tip for you. If you're looking to buy a new Ford, you have to check out my buddy, Jason Gudenkoff at Lewisburg Ford. They've been saving Midwest Ford buyers thousands of bucks for over 40 years because they do business the right way. They sell everything. Check this out for $50 over invoice. That's simple and cheap. And they win a lot of awards. In fact, they won Ford's President's Award 17 times. That's the top Ford award. And they only give it to dealers with superior customer satisfaction in sales and service. So they know how to take care of customers better than anybody. Now, what these guys know how to do also, keep this in mind, sell trucks. Lewisburg Ford has sold more F-150s than any other Ford dealership in greater Kansas City. That's two years running. And last year, they were the number one F-150 sales leader in the entire state of Kansas. So, no hassle. $50 over invoice pricing, unparalleled customer satisfaction, and a huge selection. That's a perfect recipe for selling trucks. So, check out all their inventory and prices online at lewisburgford.com. Or give them a call at 816-444-2300. New golf clubs. A big screen TV to watch the U.S. Open? Or maybe even a new golf cart that I've got my eye on? No matter how you choose to spend the savings, if you're looking to put a dent in your monthly heating and cooling bills, the answer may be right over your head. If your attic isn't insulated properly, you're missing out on a prime opportunity to cut costs. Call the certified energy experts at Star Companies, Inc., 816-353-2160 for a free estimate to learn how they can help you save money. 816-353-2160 or visit starcompanieskc.com. All right, welcome back. Golf Underground, George Sully. Bordeaux here back in the uh, stable. Um, George, we came real close. So the uh, World Series is uh, about to begin, Yankees, Dodgers. And, of course, you and I were chatting as we were prepping today. And eh, we pretty much agree neither one of us really gives a shit about what happens from here. Um, so uh, you're a pretty much fair-weathered sports fan. I'm baseballed out. <clears throat> I don't really care. George Brick can get baseballed out. I really don't care. I don't uh, have a lot, of, a lot of love loss with the Yankees. And, you know, hey, here's some shocking news to you. Who's got the two highest payrolls in Major League Baseball? Mm, let's let's just them. imagine. Think about this. Are they in blue states? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They're in blue states. I think it would probably be the Yankees and the Dodgers, Dodgers right? right? Isn't right. that isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that How's amazing? That work? Well, why, why, why you know, they're just lucky. Is that Jazz Grissom guy or Chisholm Jazz? Jazz Chisholm? Chisholm on your face <laughs> says, oh, they're just lucky. Well, I, no, guess, I guess the Yankees and Dodgers are lucky. I don't know. What about Moneyball? So, Moneyball doesn't work anymore? I guess not. So will you watch one pitch of that series? I'll watch it live. I mean, I'll, I'll, if nothing's on, I'll just turn it on, just get to get a flow for the game. You know, what I do a lot is is I'll watch. I have the MLB app, and I'll go down. It's like if I miss a Royals game, they're on the road, and I don't want to watch the whole thing. I'm out having dinner. I just get up in the morning. I watch the condensed version of the game. It takes 12 minutes, 13 minutes, depending on how many runs are scored, how many highlights there are. But I will probably do that, and I'll turn on MLB Network in the morning when I get up and and just kind of get the highlights. But, no, I will not be glued to my TV watching guys that are getting paid 30 40 million fucking dollars a year to hit a home run and then do all these synchronized bullshit <laughs> stuff. I hate it. I can't stand it. I can't, cannot stand that crap. If you're getting paid a lot of money, hit a home run, high five the guy and go sit down. Yep. It drives me fucking crazy. <laughs> you know what? And even, even watching the Chiefs game yesterday, I watched the Chiefs game yesterday. We all do. I mean, I'm a huge Chiefs fan. And and you see these guys when they score a touchdown, they go crazy. And I was thinking yesterday, Marcus Allen's a good friend of mine. You know, I knew Marcus when he I don't didn't know when he went to USC, but when he played for the Raiders, came over for the Chiefs, and he and I became friends. And man, that guy would score a touchdown and he was class. He would hand the ball to the official. And now they're doing all the celebrations and stuff. And I'm not into that. 
I'm what about a good I'm old not, I'm not into it, Kevin. I'll never be into it. What about a good old spike? Just a spike. The spike's ball? good. Here's the three things but, that you know, don't all me. the all the synchronized no. celebrations when they the run team runs down and they all do all the same stuff. Well, a lot of it's I'm not into that. I'm 71 years old. I'm uh, sorry. Maybe that's the problem. I'm sorry. I'm not into that stuff. But here's the thing. Like the the things that don't bother me are like Tony G would do the little slam dunk. It's uh, one I don't dunk. mind that. Done. The slam the dunk. The other thing I used to do as a little kid is I would spin the ball. I spin the ball and you're done, and then you're running off. Like, did you ever but, score a touchdown? Um, of course. Uh, no, seriously. Seventh did grade, you play high school football? Here are Cougars. Dialed. Did you play high school football? <laughs> uh, yeah. Number 29? No. <laughs> Great school. <laughs> Great school. Okay, flag football. Uh, oh, tackle. Oh, you played tackle, and you scored a touchdown, and you did the flip with the ball. and. <laughs> Like a top Doughboy. Doughboy okay. taught me that. Okay, but here, did Doughboy your brother ever score a touchdown? Or uh, he, was a he, had a, he had to be a lineman. He had a red X on his. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Doughboy, I love yeah. you. Which means he was running back for the first four years of his. Uh, yeah, because right? they put the big no, boys. In. I'm just not into it, and you know, I can I can still watch a game, but it doesn't take. And the, and when the Yankees play a game, it's three hours. Yeah, for some reason it's three hours, and and now with the play the World Series, I mean, believe me, Major League Baseball after last year's World Series of the Diamondbacks and the Rangers, they said it was the worst watched rated TV World Series ever. You think they wanted the Royals and uh, oh, I don't even know who it was San Diego. They didn't want no. that. They wanted this from the start. They wanted the Dodgers, Yankees, yeah. and it'll have unbelievable ratings. It'll have unbelievable ratings. And the two highest payroll teams are in. You got Judge and Otani. You got better than Soto. And, you know, I can't tell you five pitchers from either team. I right. can tell you Garrett Cole and that Rodon guy, and that's it. Yeah. I couldn't tell you starting pitchers for the Dodgers. Couldn't tell you one. But what I don't you- even know who their closer is. All right, but you saying this would lead someone to think uh, they, there were either some decisions made or some calls made. That no, I'm not, purposely... I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting Well, how the heck do they uh, organize that? Well, they're just the two best teams, and that's what they wanted. I would say this, though. There was a crucial call in the Yankee game. Yeah. That um, stolen base. Right. Was and, he out? Well, from what uh, when I saw the replay, he was out, and then I went down to see the replay the next day, and it was off the air. I don't know what happened. I know. I don't know. That was a turning event right yeah. there. Well, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You never know. That didn't make sense. But, but how fun was it? Because it was he, a lot even, of fun. I mean, last so George won 56 game yeah. and lost 106. George this year we won 80, 88, 32 game improvement in one year. Awesome. And then you get to go to Baltimore, and Baltimore – was good. They're really good. You beat them twice. Yep. Best out of three. You beat them first two games. Mm-hmm. Could have won game one against the Yankees. We lost. We walked nine guys or something in the mm-hmm. fourth inning on. Two of them in. Yeah. And and then and then the next game we win, come home. And I tell you what, we played them tough. Mm-hmm. We played them tough. I saw Aaron Boone after the after they won the fourth game. I was going down to the crown club to get a beer. Uh, because they don't have beer in the locker room anymore. They used to have kegs in there when I played, but they don't have them anymore. So um, I was going down there. Aaron was coming uh, from doing his post-game interviews, and I saw him in this little walkway. And and I've known Aaron Boone since he was a kid, since yeah, he was that, right? eight years old. I've known this guy. Now he's the manager of the Yankees and a good manager and a good guy. I like him. And um, only guy I like on the Yankees, but uh, I like Frank. I, I like Aaron Judge. I met him last year, and I met his father. His father is really a cool dude. But um, I saw him, and he basically just said, "Boy, I'm happy to get out of here because they didn't. They were afraid of us. Of they really were. Yeah. And yeah, you, know, you look at our team, and Bobby Witt got I think two hits, and and Pasquantino got one, and Sal got one or two, and that was it. And those are the guys that carried us all year. If they had good series, we could have won the, I know. Won the whole thing. Yeah. Bottom they, lineup they, did a nice job. Bottom they, lineup they did a pretty good job. Yeah. yeah. So it, so as a manager in, in that position, if you're two, your studs, your two studs, of course, Vinny was hurt. And, oh, and, 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 and his x-ray looks like it's a, still a mess. You don't, you don't blame, blame Bobby for anything. You don't blame Sal for anything. I mean, they pitched them so tough. They pitched them so tough. 
they didn't care if they walked Bobby and, 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 you know, every team in a baseball series, they, they always go into a, a, a series and they go, okay, don't let this guy beat you. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's not going to beat you. And Bobby Witt was our guy. Bobby Witt would have been the guy if he was on the Angels mm-hmm. or if he was on mm-hmm. the Yankees. Mm-hmm. Don't let Bobby Witt be. He let all major leagues baseball and hitting this year. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden we go to Baltimore and we win one nothing the first game and who drives in the win? Winning run, Bobby Witt. Sure. So all of a sudden we win two to one in game two. Who drives in the second run? Bobby Witt. The Yankees are saying, I don't give a shit if it's the first inning. We're not pitching to him. Mm-hmm. And and Bobby's twenty three years old. And and he and, and he, was, balls. he chased a few that yeah. he normally wouldn't, right. but you don't blame him. Right. Sal, I mean, Vinny hitting behind him hadn't played in six weeks. That's what I mean. He didn't go down to the minor leagues and do a rehab assignment. He went from taking BP on the field. Hey, my thumb feels good. It's still fractured, but I'll play, you know? And, and, and Bobby was just trying to do a tad too much. And, and they would have rather pitched to Vinny than Bobby any day of the week. Yeah. But I love Bobby Wood. He's one of the best players in the game. And next year we make it in this situation. Look out. Would you have pulled Vinny? Or just not played him? No. Because of the injury. Certainly I, not I because of this. It. He's too much of a threat. He hit some balls hard. He only got one hit, I think, and it was a double, drove in a run in the last game. Yeah. And and we were down three to three to nothing at the time. So he's on second, drives in Bobby, and then Sal comes up. And uh but Vinny hit some balls right on the nose. Yeah. He hit some balls on the nose. So if you would have said in spring training or before the season started or at the end of last year, we're gonna win. Go to Baltimore, win that series, and then come be pretty damn competitive in the ALDS. Would you have taken it? Sure. I think anybody would have taken it. You guys would have taken it. The fans of Kansas City would have taken it. Everybody would have taken it. But uh, one guy that I tell you, my son Jackson, he's he's an amazing Royal fan, Chiefs fan, everything Kansas City fan. And he's getting married in November, and he got engaged in February. And and I said, why are you getting married in November? He said, Dad, in case the Royal, Royals make the World Series. I want all the clubbies to come because he was a clubby for six years. Uh, he was down the right field line. He was the ball boy, the bat boy. He shined shoes. He packed guys' bags. He did everything for uh, six years. And he worked for the Royals. And he says, hey, I said, Jackson, they won 56 games last year. Dad, you never know, but I want all the clubbies to come. Sure yeah. enough, he booked his wedding for oh, November 16th. Chuck so Hawk going to be there? Chuck Hawk's going to be go. there. Wow. Chuck, I mean, all the clubbies, and they got Dayton's invited, and JJ, and the front office, and Rex, and yeah. and Ryan Lefevre, and Denny Matthews. Yeah, and In cool. fact, I'm going to try to talk to the Royals announcers, and when they come walking into the reception, to do it like a post game show or a pre game show. Oh, that'd be great. And now come in, yeah, <laughs> you know, yes. and announce him. Have Denny do it oh. and Rex and, and Ryan do it. How great. Oh, are you be? kidding me? Yeah. He would love it. So that. we're going to try to figure something out to do. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Hey, well, that'd be great. Hey, well, not to, to get off uh, topic, but Denny Matthews still. It's just amazing. He's he's. I tell you what, I've I didn't never heard him when I was playing for those twenty years, yeah. but I've heard him a lot since. Yeah, God, he's good. He's so for those of you who don't know, Denny Matthews, so he's been doing it fifty years. He's been a Royals announcer. He's the Roy- he was the second employee ever hired by the Royals in nineteen sixty nine. The first was no, the third. The first was Cedric Callis, who was the general manager, who just got put in the Royals Hall of Fame, which is an amazing thing. I'll tell you a little bit about him if I don't forget. And then it was Buddy Blattner, who was our announcer in in, uh, 1969, and Buddy hired uh, Denny Matthews, and he's been with the Royal Organization since 1969. Art Stewart was with him in 1969. He passed away a few years ago, and I'm the second longest tenured employee of the Royals. I've been with them since 1971. Wow. How's that? Jesus. Is that unbelievable? Well, you know, listen, they... Yeah. It, between you and Denny, Denny still has all his marbles. He's, He's 80 He's years really old. Good. Really and good. it's not easy no. to string together a story for, for two and a half right. hours. And the I'm knowledge, amazed. he hasn't lost anything. And you know what? He's still got every scorecard he's ever done. And when you look at a scorecard after a game, he showed it to me one time. It looks like someone types it. It's perfect. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely perfect. And he has them all in his house. Scorecards from every game he's ever called. File perfectly filed. Wow, it's it's an it's amazing. 
That's amazing. So Cedric Tellis, let me get back to him. He was our first GM. And and he made the trades to bring over John Mayberry, Amos Sotis, Cookie Rojas, Freddie Patek. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. These guys that were very instrumental in the Royals, you know, getting off to a good start as an expansion franchise. And the people he traded, one guy was an all-star. One guy became an all-star one time. I, I, I'm aware of all this now because he got inducted in the Royal Hall of Fame and Kurt Nelson, our Royal Hall of Fame guy and uh, historian that works for the Royals, was telling us this at the luncheon. The, the guys that he, we traded away made one All-Star game complete. And the guys that we traded for made like 35. Wow. And then they had that new thing, war. I don't understand how it works. Wins against replacement. If they take you out of the lineup, they figure out there's a formula, how many, what your war is. The combined war of the people that he traded for all these guys was like six. Man. And the combined war, the guys we traded for were like 160 or something. I mean, it was just crazy. Wow. I mean, and I didn't know that. And I knew Cedric because when I came up, he was the general manager. But I was a minor league guy, and he never associated himself with me. I was dealing with the John Sherholtz and the Lou Gormitz of the world, yeah. you know, the minor league guys. And then by the time I got to the major leagues, I think Cedric was there one year, and then he left and went someplace else. But, um, I mean, he's the guy that when you bring in Freddie Potek, John Mayberry, Cookie Rojas, and, and and a lot of those other guys mm-hmm. that, you know, if you're under 40, you've never heard of these guys yeah. before, you know. If you're under 40, you don't even know me, you know, really. <clears throat> yeah, they do now after watching um, watching uh, Fox. Because you were on that, you were on that. Well, I thought it was crazy. I thought it was crazy. We had game game three of the playoffs, so that was the seventy eight to twenty. That would be forty four years or forty six years ago is when me and Greg Nettles got in a fight at oh, their yeah. base that that day. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going. Somebody brought it to my attention, and I'm going. Oh, I bet they put it on the scoreboard before the game. Get the fans riled up a little. Yeah, they should have. If you're under forty six, you weren't even born. Right. Then, you know. Yeah. And then, and then, forty-four years that the last game, forty-four years ago, was when I hit the home run off Gossage. I said, "Oh, they got to play that before the game to get the fans riled up." Yeah, they didn't even do that. No, they played it on Fox, huh? They played oh, it. They on did. Fox well, I was I was at the stadium. And you were at the stadium, yeah, yeah. because uh, they went to you, and about every other time they went to you, you were on your phone, because everybody was telling, "Hey, you're on TV." Yeah, yeah. For site tax change, go like this. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, somebody texts me, "Who's the young girl in Georgia?" I go, uh, "That's yeah, that's, 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 that's right. Right. <laughs> Hey, so in '85, you won a World Series. Is the game much different, or the team? So, if you compare this team to your, your you know, an '85 World Series team, has baseball changed? Is the is the uh, you know the dynamics of a team like you know this modern team is it a lot different? Other than the hand signals and the macarenas, <laughs> do they get a yeah, the macarena and yeah. and the uh, the uh, walk like an Egyptian and oh, stuff like yeah, that? That's, that's a good one too. Like I'm surprised one. nobody does that, yeah. does that when they walk. That's you know, nice do a Steve Martin walk yeah. down the first base like yeah. that. <laughs> Kind of, I was playing. I would have to do that if I yeah. if they intentionally walked me today. I'd walk to first base like an Egyptian. <laughs> if you if you had to pick a move other than the Egyptian, what would be your modern day go to? You just hit a double in the gap. Oh, uh, what would what would your move be? I was like Moose's Moose, uh, Mike Moustakis. Yeah. He would go like this. I always, <laughs> I always liked that. I never liked Hosmer's. He would always like put on a backpack. He'd go. I used to, when I would get, when I'd be on second base, Buddy Black was a good friend of mine and still is. I talked to him the other day. He's the manager now of the Rockies and we played together seven years and, and I'd get on second base and, and he would always be kind of looking at me and I would always do this to him. Make sure the line drive gets through before you run, you know? Yeah. Yeah. See you through. Why drive? Make sure it goes through the infield. Wait, he was saying that to you, or you were saying that to him? To him, and he would just die laughing in the dugout. He would just die laughing. Yeah. So you would have signs with one guy, maybe yeah. two guys, you yeah. know, but not the whole team. Where a guy gets a hit, and everybody does the the mm-hmm. moose or the you know put on your backpack or whatever. But <laughs> I tell you something funny. I don't, you know, in fourteen and fifteen, I was in the celebration because uh, I travel with them during the postseason. And and I was a lot 
more involved with the 14 and 15 teams yeah. than I am now yeah. because I was the hitting coach for two months in 13. And I knew all those guys and they all came up to the system. Now we made all these trades and yeah. signed all these people. Right. I didn't know half the guys on the team. So I I go down after they get in the wild card in Atlanta, uh, where we win, we won, and so we're automatically we just don't know if we're going to Houston or if we're going to Baltimore. And I'm standing outside, and somebody's going, "Come on, you got to go in there." I go, "I'm not going in there. You got to go in there." So I take off my shirt, I put it in uh, Q's office, Matt Quatero's the thing, and I put on a t-shirt. And I'm wearing jeans and stuff, and I go in there, and next thing you know, everybody's throwing champagne. Oh, yeah. You're in the midst yeah. of it. So everybody's got goggles on. And I'm somebody gives me a set of goggles, and I said, no, I'm too old school. I don't use goggles. I didn't use elbow pads. I didn't use shin pads, and I don't, didn't even wear batting gloves. I sure as hell ain't going to wear goggles in the locker room doing <laughs> champagne. champagne. And my eyes are on fire. <laughs> I said, I'm too old school, guys. I'm not doing that shit, you know? So good. Well, the- and then somebody took their goggles off and they're going, God damn it, George. Oh, yeah. Well, the pictures on social media were funny because you were, when you saw the champagne flying, and this is just us getting into the Baltimore series, right? Yeah. This is where we just qualified. And they did it after And you're Baltimore out there too. like this. I, say, I look at him like, I was I in the corner. Yes, George. I was in the corner. I never went in the middle. I I, no, 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 no. Oh, I'll show you. There's, there's, uh, but there's, there's, there's some shots of you around and stuff. And so the camera followed you. I mean, how good is the how good is the shirt off deal too? Which I don't know if that was, I thought that was that was that was, that, was that, was that was a sporting KC game. Somebody put <laughs> well, that. tell the people what you're talking about, Wardo, because they don't. Oh, so, right after. Were you there with me at that game? I wasn't there. I think it was. Tommy was in town. I think it was Tommy driven. Um, but now. right after we made the playoffs, all of a sudden the. Shirt off picture. I don't know. It might have been after we beat Baltimore. All of a sudden, the shirt off picture starts going around, and I'm looking at this thing, and I've wait a second. I've, I've seen this before. That's an Illig Sweet, yeah, and that's Illig Sweet, and it says he's got a credential on it says Sporting KC. <laughs> and your shirt was off. Well, Johnny well, Russell's my favorite player, yeah, and Johnny scored two goals that day. And so I was there watching, and he scored that second one, and I always wear my Johnny Russell T-shirt to every sporting game. You know how everybody wears their jerseys? Yeah. And I just have a Johnny Russell (laughs) T-shirt and played golf with him. Great guy. I love the guy. And so he scored his second goal, and I just took that shirt, started swinging around. There's like three of us in the suite. (laughs) Amazing. And somebody takes a picture of it and puts it, I think Illig did, Mike. Yeah. And he sees me, takes a picture, and he posts it. You know, they own the team. Yeah. So, hey, let's get George in here celebrating a goal, you know? So, sure enough, I get home, and my wife goes, "Uh, how drunk were you? (laughs) And I'm going, what are you talking about? Well, I saw the picture of you with your shirt off. I go, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, did you take your shirt off? And, yeah, but I was in the suite. I wasn't out in the stands doing it. She shows it to me. I called up, and then she called Mike and said, "Mike, take that down, please." She did, <laughs> and then somebody reposted it. Yeah, because I saw, yeah, I, I, I mean, saw by the way, your body, I'm not your body looks not, fantastic. No, I don't think so. I've been working with. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do that in Yankee Stadium in a suite. Yeah. <laughs> Or Baltimore in a suite. I'm not going to. Hey, are there any Steinbrenners left for you to hate while you're uh, while No, you're there? I uh, I was talking to one of the guys there, uh, the guy that runs the suite level, and he does house Steinbrenner suite. And he came over and he wrote a book about his days working for the Yankees. He used to be a bat boy there. And now he's 50 years old, 60 years old. And to make a long story short. You know, we were talking about George and my dealings with him and and who has always treated me. Unbelievable. Yeah. I got nice letters from him at home. I, I saw one the other day, and it was really classy for him to write me a letter, you know? So yeah. You're talking about George. George Steinbrenner. Yeah. 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 And um, when my dad was sick, about a month before he died, my dad went to New York, and he grew up there, and my brothers were all born there. And my brother Ken was announcing for the Angels back then. So they go back, and George gives them a town car for the whole weekend. Any, anywhere they wanted to go. Wow. George did that on his own. No, one, we didn't ask him. He yeah. just did it. Nice. But that's the side of George Steinbrenner that nobody knows. Yeah. You know, but he was really a cool guy. He always took care of me. Um, had dinner with him on a couple, a couple of occasions. Um, some weird conversations, but um, so 
this guy now, Hal Steinbrenner, was like four suites down from me. And I said, I've never met Hal. I'd love to meet him. He said, I'll bring him over. Well, he never brought him over. And I sure as hell wasn't going to go in their suite uninvited. Right, right. Yeah. So, but I never did meet Hal. And does it, does it feel, now. does it feel, do you still, to, to be in Yankee Stadium and, and all the stuff, you mentioned the home run, which they did play on the on Fox. They showed the home run. They showed the, the medals thing. But it, you're sitting there looking at it. Do you go like, this is freaking wild that it was what year 77 70 all the 76, time 76 77 78 we lost we beat him in 80 yeah, right and never played him again in but the is playoffs. it what's it like do you sit there and get reminiscent at all and just like wow i can't believe it. well i remember the first year i was really intimidated by him because there are fifty six thousand people there and they're screaming i mean obscenities at you and and then finally after 77 i went back there and these kids see you come out to take batting practice uh, before the game and the gates just open and everybody's running down and kids going, you know, Hey, Brett, give me a ball. You're my favorite player. You're my favorite player. Give me a ball in that New York accent. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And you fake it to them and you don't give it to them and they go, fuck you. Hope you break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> that's the type of people you're dealing with, okay. you know? Oh yeah. So all of a sudden I started realizing, I said, okay, now the stadium was filled with my peers and they were booing me and yelling bad stuff. It would offend me. And then I just looked at him. I said, consider the source. These guys have never played baseball in their life. They're just diehard Yankee fans. So it didn't bother me anymore. It really didn't. And I told, so I told Bobby with that, I said, Bobby, consider the source when you look, just look at them because they were, they were screaming that they had the whole stadium was in chance. Bobby Witt. Bad, really bad shit, nasty stuff that you don't let's say to your kids, you know. Really, yeah. And and uh, you don't you don't say it around kids. And the whole stadium and the whole bleachers are yelling it, and it's all Bobby Witt. Fuck Bobby Witt. Fuck Bobby Witt. You know. And it didn't bother him. And I just, the next day I said, hey, don't let it bother you. All you got to do is look at the people yelling at you, yeah. and, and look at them and wonder what they do for a job, and wonder what they've done for education. You know. Yeah. And and and. What have they ever done in baseball or right. football? Or and then you just or, laugh. then it's funny. Right. Then it's really funny. I would yeah. think. Go ahead. You guys can yell anything you want at me because you know I'm considering the source where it's coming. It's not Carlius Grimsky and Brooks Robinson and Frank Robinson and Pete Rose yeah. and Mike Schmidt yeah. yelling it at you. Right. It's these idiots. Yeah. Idiots. Yeah. You know. So they care as much as you guys did in the old school days. Um, I, I would think they did. They were pretty disheartened, um, after they lost, I went down there and thanked everybody for a great summer, all the mm-hmm. players, you know, and they walked or they were kind of going around in circles and hugging everybody. And, you know, I just said, Hey, I want to thank you for a great summer. Yeah. We'll have a better one next year. Keep yeah. your head up. We exceeded expectations yeah. and there's a lot to grow from that. And it's a good learning experience. And, um, so again, Kevin, you said it best. If, if, Somebody in spring training would say, you guys are going to win the wild card thing and go on and and be one series away and be in every game against the team that's going to be in the World Series and lose. Would you take it? Hell yeah, I'd take it. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good learning experience. First time a lot of these guys have ever been in the playoffs. First time they ever. Were. Of course. Of Sal's course. been in it. I think Walk has been in it. Lugo might have been in it, you know. But uh, you look at the Michael Massey's, the the Vinnies, and uh, the Mikel Garcia's, the uh, our center fielder, left fielder, right fielder. No, they've never been in the playoffs. Well, before. I would say, and they and they performed. They did well. Listen, I think the huge value that comes out of this is um, families started watching the Royals, young kids started watching the Royals. It wasn't all year. No, they only got interested, you know, as we got closer. Well, you got one of the best, best players in baseball. Yeah. Bobby Wood. You got one of the best players in baseball, and you got a catcher that's going in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Of course. Sal Perez will oh, be in course. Cooperstown. Of course. Five years after he retires, he's going to be in Cooperstown. Is this um, success enough to get us a downtown stadium? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I know it's uh, been strike one, strike two. Um, I don't know what strike three is or I don't know what the count is. Would they ever leave Kansas City? No, they're no, they'll never leave here. John Sherman's from here. Um, every investor that's invested in the Kansas City Royals um, has ties to Kansas City. Mahomes. <laughs> How about Mahomes going after his Yankee buddy? Did you see any of the video of that? Yeah, oh, you were Dieter. That was Dieter. 
Yeah. Oh, it was Dieter? Oh, I didn't know it was Dieter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was so, funny. He was fired up. Yeah. So good. That was a blast. Oh, it was a great run. Great run. And, you know, I looked at all your questions and you said, what's the big difference? Well, the big difference was pitching. We had Reagan, who's, God, he's unbelievable. Uh, you had Lugo and Waka. Those three guys, Singer held his own and. The bullpen early, they they we had a lot of guys get hurt, but JJ did a great job in replacing them and bringing over Erkset and and um, and some other guys. And man, it was uh, it was fun. It was it was a great year. Yeah. And our Chiefs are six and zero, oh, and Kevin won a championship. Life is good. I mean, Missouri just, won again. God, you're excited. Huh? And you finally won. They won two they games won. now. They have to two. They got they, two on the board. You know, I mean, this is nice. This is nice. I got around with All right. on the well, 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 You've got a big dinner night. Eddie I V's with, with the old men tonight. Eddie V's. My Monday lunch group. Eddie V's. All right. Well, listen, come on back. See you next time. Golf Underground. Ah!